dear thinkers. Since I tackled freedom in the previous video, and I have mentioned about how freedom can terribly affect one's life, hence, in this video lesson edition, I am going to specify the limitations of freedom. So, if you want to know if you are on the right track in the exercise of your freedom, just keep an open eyes and ears until the very end of this video. From infancy to early childhood, a person cannot yet be said to be completely free, both in a negative and positive sense. However, during adulthood, a person must realize that he can steer the direction of his life through his own choices. Here, we can conclude that a person is not born free, rather is born to be free and meant to grow in freedom. However, in most cases, freedom comes across as a burden to many young adults. There is tendency for them to feel lost, like a driftwood in a boundless sea, without any clue which side of the sea awaits for a better end. The realization that one's life directions are mostly up to one's own choices tend to paralyze a person for the reason of needing to face so many possibilities. The worst that can ever happen to anyone is to become anonymous to oneself by losing his individuality. This condition, also known as the amorphous self or the unstructured understanding of oneself, makes a person rely on other people's judgment of who she is in order to define oneself. In other words, having an unknown self. Philosophers have made various understanding of freedom. The existentialists argue that every human person must take care not to get lost in anonymity with the crowd. They said, men and women of this century found themselves absorbed in conflicting system of the society, and it is as if most people are controlled by an anonymous crowd. Existentialism upholds the word exists. To exist means to stand out from facelessness and anonymity, to rise above the crowd. The main tenet of existentialism is that we are the authors of our lives. In every story, there is unique plot twist. It is the author who creates those turning points. If we take full responsibility over our own lives, then we can say that those plot twists are not the products of the fate or destiny, but of our own choices. Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher, said that freedom is choosing for oneself that leads to personality consolidation. This means that only by making choices and decisions for ourselves and by committing mistakes and learning from it, we can be able to compose our character. Thus, every individual must learn to make decisions and choices for oneself and not just depend on other people. Moreover, Kierkegaard also argued that when we allow dominant forces or personalities around us to choose for ourselves, the most important aspect of our lives, which is our own persona, will remain inauthentic. Freedom, therefore, means exercising our capacity to make decisions, choose our life path, and direct the course of our lives through our own steering. Another known philosopher, Jean Paul Sartre, argues that there is no essence that precedes existence. Essence can be understood as a pre-given nature of a person. To be essentialist is to assume that there is an existing real self that has already been pre-cut for each one of us, and all that a person needs to do is to confine all of his actions according to this essence. However, because of this essence, 
When a person does not fulfill the criteria of his essence, he can be judged as inauthentic and abnormal. Indeed, every human person has to learn how to exercise freedom as one should be. However, going beyond the limits of our freedom is not impossible because we live in an era where choices are so unrestricted. Hence, it is important that we develop mindfulness of the determinants of the limitations of our freedom. But what are these limitations? Let's find out. The first limitation is the self. We ought to know that the exercise of freedom must not be detrimental to oneself. Freedom must uplift or help a person achieve the highest possibilities that one can be and not by any chance must cause one's failure. Thus, if the exercise of freedom will lead to destruction of oneself, a person must know to change the path that he is taking. The second determinant of the limitation of freedom is the others. In the exercise of one's freedom, we should bear in mind that we have responsibilities towards other people. We ought to remember that our freedom is limited to the right and freedom of the other people that also needs to prevail. We cannot just live as we want, but we have to live bearing in mind that fairness, justice, and equity must transpire in all that we do. If the exercise of one's freedom will cause deprivation of the other's freedom, then the person must swerve into choices and actions that is fair and just to others. The next determinant of the limitation of freedom is the society. The human person's freedom is limited to the peace and order of the society. This is guided by the civil law. Thus, a person must bear in mind that in the exercise of freedom, the orderliness of the society must not be threatened. Instead, all actions must inspire growth or progress in humanity. Next is the environment. Though we may have realized how human persons have exploited the environment, however, it is still not too late for us to change our ways and make actions to save the environment. Let us bear in mind that the exercise of our freedom needs to end if it will result to the environment being jeopardized. The last but not the least to limit our freedom is God. Remember, human beings were created to be the stewards of God's creations. Hence, the freedom of all human beings is limited based on God's commandments. Our very action must thoughtfully consider at all times if it will be what God wants us to do or be. Thank you for watching. If you learned something from this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye!